Oh boy, welcome, one welcome all. Tis I, Josh Potter, back with you once again for another, oh boy, episode of the Josh Potter Show. Let me throwing things around. Boy, oh boy. You know, doing the two podcasts now, we gotta, poor Alex has to change everything around. It's not much, but it's enough to be annoying. I got this little microphone here. I can put it over to the side when I'm not using it. I bring it back and I'm throwing it all over the place. So thank you to Alex for resetting things up. We got Kirsten here today, folks. Oh boy, another Wednesday is upon us. I got to let you know, thejoshpotter.com, thejoshpotter.com. That's where you can go find all the things about the roach, including where you can go see me live. That's right. I'm going to be in uh, the old Huntsville, Alabama, coming up here April 26th, 27th. Pleased to be getting your tickets for shows in Huntsville, Alabama. Then May gets crazy. May, we're going to be in Seattle. We're going to be in Chicago, Washington, D.C., Allentown, Pennsylvania. All that happening in May. Get your tickets. All of them on sale. You can go over to thejoshpotter.com and find them for yourself. We're going to be looking at June 14th and 15th houston texas then we've got baltimore cleveland some other shows might pop up in june june might be bananas july we've already got dallas texas just on the books that one might not be on sale yet but get ready july that's happening and of course on sale in august it's been on sale for a while so go get those tickets it's far out but let's buy the tickets up (laughs) omaha and des moines in august oh boy other than that folks thanks for if you've been watching behind the g streaming live to all the your mom's house channel members every wednesday and then it comes out on thursday for the rest of y'all so i hope you've been watching that as well oh boy other than that folks what else do we have to announce oh got a bit of a phone call from al madrigal (laughs) spoke to the man on the phone and i'll just say this he'll be on this program and uh it won't be next episode we're just got to work out some scheduling things and then, boom, he'll be on the uh, what I hope to be the episode after next week. He'll be right here in this chair Kirsten's in today. And other than that, the Josh Potter, uh, well, the Patreon, patreon.com slash the Josh Potter show, twitch.tv slash Josh underscore Potter. Those are other things you can follow along as well. Again, the Josh Potter.com is where you can find everything. Thank you to Griff Parker for making this uh, musical number. If you want to send things in, whether they be articles or musical numbers, or you just want to tell me about your day, I love all all the emails josh potter show at gmail.com is where you can send them in we've got breaking sports news i know people some people hate the sports usually sometimes i like to put them off for those people but today we're getting right into it because baseball's around the corner and i'm feeling good Oh boy, baseball's almost here. In fact, I had to set my alarm uh, because guess what, folks? I got my fantasy draft coming up here at the end of this episode. So if you hear the alarm go off, that means I'm on the clock to make my first pick. I already know who I'm going with if I get it. Uh, So let me just reaffirm that. All right. I just don't want to miss it. Don't want to miss the first round, you know? But elsewhere going on in the sports world and baseball particular, you know, I thought a new season is upon us. This will be a time when uh, I get very elated. It's kind of my Christmas because you see football has ended just a few weeks ago. And this is where the roach gets sad. What do I do? You know, hockey, the playoffs are approaching. I love me some hockey, but the Sabres always do this thing where they get this close to the playoffs and then blow it. So it's kind of a depressing time of the year until baseball starts. And I got to go to a spring training game and I was getting all in the mood and then all of a sudden there's a scandal in the baseball world it's shining star it's international superhero Shohei Otani is amidst a gambling scandal my favorite kind of scandal frankly as a gambler myself a degenerate at that boy oh boy if I had the money Shohei Otani had I would be doing wild with it too (laughs) But Shohei Otani is not the person necessarily who was gambling. If you don't know the story, Shohei Otani's best friend and interpreter for longer than he's even been in Major League Baseball. He, this man was working closely with Shohei Otani. He considered him uh, part of his family. His name is, well, how do you say it again? Ipe? I think it's Ipe. Ipe Mizuara. And uh again, he was his translator. He would go around. He would basically, I mean, when you'd see Shohei Otani, you'd see this man. Because he was, you know, 
relaying information to all of the uh, reporters and everything like that. And uh, uh, so here's the story, folks. Ipe was taking millions and millions and millions of dollars from Shohei Otani and gambling it on illegal gambling sites. That is what the initial report was. And initially, Shohei Otani was not investigated by Major League Baseball as a part of this because he was like, it was my translator's doing, and he's been stealing from me. Uh, Here it says, Shohei Otani said that his former interpreter has been stealing from his account and has told lies. He recently, Shohei, just like minutes ago from this uh, recording, came out and made a statement. First time he addressed these kinds of things. And I'm just getting the news right now as I'm delivering it to you. The baseball superstar said he was in South Korea for a series against the Padres when the media contacted his representatives about potential involvement in sports betting. Otani indicated that Ipe uh, Mizuhara never told him about the media inquiry. Ipe told to the media and to the representatives that I, on behalf of a friend, paid off debt. Otani said through a new interpreter Monday, I'd imagine. What if it was still Ipe? (laughs) He's like changing it. I don't know why I did sign language. By the way. <laughs> but he's just changing what he says. He's like, Ipe is a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> Love him to death. I don't care what he did. <laughs> Upon further questioning, it was revealed that it was actually, in fact, Ipe who was in debt and told my representatives. Now, this is Shohei talking, told my representatives that I was paying off those debts. So he thought he was just like, Ipe's like, hey, Shohei, you know, we're buds. I know I work for you. But I'm in a little bit of financial trouble. I got a bit of a debt. And Shohei's like, oh, pff, I'm a bazillionaire. How much money do you need? And he's like, I don't know, like $8 million. Is that cool? <laughs> what kind of debt would that be? I'd be like, medical bills? What are we paying here? $8 million or something. I mean, I don't even know what. It was millions upon millions upon millions. Otani added, all of this has been a complete lie. Here's some background on it. Ms. Mizuara was fired last week after Otani's lawyers accused him of massive theft of millions of dollars and placing bets with a bookmaker under federal investigation, according to ESPN in the Los Angeles Times, which uh, first reported the story. Now, many theories when this came out were bandied about. Is Ipe the best friend ever or the worst friend ever? Was he, in fact, stealing millions of dollars from Shohei Otani and gambling on uh, games? Or is he the best friend of Shohei Otani who was himself gambling on games, spending millions and millions of dollars in an illegal bookmaker and taking the fall for Shohei Otani? That's kind of been what has been the theory as of late. And here, Otani uh, says he only found out about his ex-interpreter's gambling during a team meeting last week. And I kind of believe Shohei Otani to a degree. Because the man, other teammates have, you know, former teammates that he's had, have stated the guy doesn't follow any other sports. And he barely follows other things going on in baseball. Which I can believe. The man seems like a robot, for Christ's sake. I don't think he's, like, checking the score of, like, the Kings-Coyotes game while he's on. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he has any sort of, uh, you know, idea of what's going on in the sports world aside maybe from baseball. And I don't even know if he knows what's going on around the league in baseball necessarily if I were to venture to guess. But some people have come up with a theory that perhaps he is deciding the outcome of games in the past. There's a theory afoot that states that, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, It was revealed to him during the team meeting. Otani has said also in this statement, it is really hard for me to verbalize how I'm feeling. Well, without an interpreter, I'd imagine it would be. (laughs) Otani said he is very sad and shocked about the theft allegations against his former uh, interpreter, et cetera, et cetera. Let's see here. I want to get to the part where someone, a guy on X. Now, this is how this is how like where there's smoke, there's fire kind of thing. Like there might not be any fire, but boy, oh boy, people are inhaling that smoke. They want it because we were going to a guy on X here. This isn't like a some investigative reporter for Major League Baseball or for one of our fine publications around the country. This is just a dude on X named Tom, uh, Timmy Smokes. 
at Timmy underscore smokes appears to show a concerning trend involving Otani's performance and bets placed by Mizuhara. So he's taken the bets. I don't know how he got this information. He's taking the bets, the amounts, doing a lot of evidence. Did Shohei Otani throw some games? Otani throwing games, a thread. Now, I'm going to try and parse this out. This might get a little boring or snoozy, but we're, I'm trying to put two and two together here. July 22nd, 2022, a bet of $1 million was placed for the Atlanta Braves to score over six and a half runs against the Angels, played or parlayed with the Braves minus three and a half. So if you're not a gambler, this is what he, this is what this person bet. They bet that the Braves would win by at least four runs here. The bets have the Braves have to win by four runs to win the bet. And there has to be a total of seven runs scored in the game as a whole. The bet was placed with a bookie in uh, some place in Japan, Shohei's hometown. The pitcher for the Angels that day, Shohei Otani. The stats for Shohei that day were as followed. 6.1 innings pitched, 6 hits, 6 earned runs, and 1 walk. That means Shohei pitched and just got him. You remember that over-under? Well, the Braves, they got 6 of those 7 runs right there with Shohei on the mound. That's uh, at the plate, you ask, 0-3 with two strikeouts. So because Shohei Otani, not only does, is he an electric pitcher, maybe an ace, he's also quite the batter. So he plays both sides of the ball. And on this particular day, 0-3 with two strikeouts. Was he throwing games? I'll let you decide. Here's another one. July 4th, 2023, America's birthday. I was at the Dodgers game that day. He was playing with the Angels at the time. A bet was placed in the same hometown with the same bookie for $4.2 million on the over for the Padres' run total. Guess who was pitching? You guessed it. Shohei. They said show fraud in here in this tweet, though. <laughs> show fraud, they call him. I don't, That's a dumb nickname. We could come up with a better one there, Timmy Smokes. I get it. You were doing your research. You didn't have time to do some creative writing. Anyway, on this game... Five innings pitched, five earned runs while going 0-3 at the plate. You know, it's funny. I wonder if Shohei Otani ever bet on the games I went to go watch because I swear to God, I thought I was just a jinx for Shohei Otani. I'm like, the guy strikes out every time I'm here. He probably just had juice on the game. (laughs) Not even 10 days later, a $10 million bet was played. This is before Shohei Otani even signed with the Dodgers and made $400 million, by the way. You know what I'm saying? He's, He's making $10 million bets. If it is, in fact, him. But the fact that it's book, the interpreter, a guy that Shohei Otani pays, is making $10 million bets, you're like, good Christ, how much is Shohei Otani's interpreter making? This is nuts. It was the same bookie, same town, a parlay of plus 2,500. This is crazy. That's a lot. That's a, this is a one, two, three, four, five-leg parlay. He had the Astros, minus one and a half. The Astros over six and a half. Shohei over 4.5 runs allowed. So he's betting, if he were to bet against himself, that means Shohei Otani has to allow five runs. That's pretty shitty if you're the starting pitcher. You're getting pulled. Imagine if the coach pulled Shohei Otani when he only allowed four runs and he's trying to get that fifth one. He's like, what are you, you're fucking up my parlay, you <laughs> motherfucker. That's what he's really yelling about. about. Shohei Otani under 6.5 strikes, which is a weird... One there, that means he's going to just throw up meatballs. Game total over 11.5. Shohei's line for the day, six innings pitched, nine hits, five earned runs while allowing two home runs. And Shohei went two for five at the plate. The extra motivation to make the overcash really helped him to get that two and five. Uh, So these are interesting, interesting thoughts. I don't know uh, how this person got the bet information. I don't know how, like, real it is or whatever. Here's my thing. If Shohei Otani is betting on games and somehow throwing games despite being the MVP of the league, that is calculated and let the man just do it then. I mean, he deserves all the money in the world if he's somehow doing that. But it does make you wonder about the poor, hapless angels. There were so many memes about the angels. They have two generational talents if you don't follow along. They had Shohei Otani and Mike Trout, two of the best players of our generation. And they couldn't make the playoffs. And there would be memes that'd be like, Shohei Otani, and they'd show this crazy stat line. Mike Trout with a crazy stat line. But the Angels lost 16 to 12. (laughs) You know, like it would always go that way, it seemed, for the poor Angels. Was it Shohei blowing it this whole time? 
so many examples, just three there by old Timmy Smokes. But we'll keep our eye on it. I'm enthralled. It's my Roman Empire. This is my, <laughs> you know, I can't stop thinking about, it. you know, Diddy right now, his home is being raided for like sex trafficking. I could care less. I want to <laughs> know more about the Shohei Otani stuff. Anyway, elsewhere in sports, there. this is a fun little one. Daniel Jones, the quarterback of the New York Giants, by all accounts, a kind of like a plain Jane quarterback. Like He's not really one that even cracks my radar. I'm like, Daniel Jones is still starting? I mean, I can't believe they haven't replaced him. He doesn't have much riz. He doesn't have much swag. And he's not that fantastic of a player. He's good. Don't get me wrong. He's an NFL quarterback. He's done it. But he's just kind of like, I'm Daniel Jones. Look at him. I mean... <laughs> doesn't excite me if i was a giants fan i wouldn't be thrilled about daniel jones being my quarterback and chances are he might not be depending on who they draft coming up here in the next couple of weeks but this might be the most um this might be the time i like daniel jones more than anything and there's some lady a trollop out there <laughs> idiot woman <laughs> she decided to leak text messages with daniel jones because he did her dirty evidently uh, it says here, so act like you are feeling me all night and take me home and then ghost me for days. Real cool, asshole. And she put text messages up that are going to torch him. Uh, can you read what uh, they say there? It says, I had a great time with you. That's what she she's writing. Or no, this That's is Daniel said. Jones. Yes, Daniel Jones is the gray text. Yeah. I had a great time with you last night. She said, oh, me too. You're singing, though. Heart eye emoji. You're singing? He was singing? I guess so. Only a lucky few get to see that. And I bet you it was so gay. <laughs> he was probably like, wise men <laughs> say only for... You know, he was singing some dumb shit like that. He wasn't like doing... Or he was doing like typical white guy shit where he like raps. And a girl's like, oh my God. <laughs> only a lucky few get to see that laughy face emoji. Well, I'm glad you didn't let those drunk fans ruin our night, superstar. Yeah, right? Giants fans are fucking trashy losers. I'm numb to it at this point. Oh, my Lord, Daniel Jones. I get it. They really rake Daniel Jones over the coals. I mean, he has not had a great time being a member of the New York football Giants. I will say that. Getting a lot of flack from fans. Hell, they had some fucking greaseball Italian guy come in from third string and be the fucking... He was the Riz Captain of America. I mean, it was Tommy DeVito. Remember the Tommy DeVito craze? Everyone was going around going like, Paisano, way. And Daniel Jones is like, cool, this is great. Because my last name is fucking, I, my name's Dan Jones, for Christ's sake. I can't get any marketing on my end. Nevertheless, he motherfucks the Giants fans. I don't think he's going to be with the Giants very much longer. Next year, depending on who they draft, as I said, he might find himself as a backup. He could play for them for one more year, but I do believe it will be the swan song of Daniel Jones with the New York Giants. What do the comments say? Someone just said, I wish this was tr true so I could respect him more. <laughs> but it's not? You think this is manufactured? Um, I don't know. Some people are being like, yeah, right, Kristen. He didn't text you this. Well, she could have set this up. This is a scary herself. thing with AI and all these types of things. I would just blame it on she made it up too. I mean, like if I really did text that to her, this is completely conceivable. AI. Though she could just text these all to herself and then delete change the, the name at the top, her. or just yeah. change the name at the top and she do it with her friend. DJ Heart Heart, DJ Giants Color Hearts. Yeah, I I mean you can manufacture that for sure. And a woman's a woman being scorn and just flaming you publicly is my worst nightmare. I mean I don't do anything. That's why I make sure I just don't do or say anything damning at all if a girl wants to put out my dick pic have at it <laughs> I, I welcome it actually <laughs> give that one to the reddit vultures please <laughs> what are they gonna say his dick's bigger than i thought it was gonna be i mean what's gonna happen to me if my dick pic gets out there what are they gonna say about your dick that al madrigold hasn't said about you exactly <laughs> you know exactly my dick pic would only go to help me in places you know penis <laughs> <laughs> next up we have so i mean i guess we got to find out if that's real or not down the road but i wonder if he just kind of brushed it off as being fake is there a daniel jones statement that has come out you don't think it's just like a super loyal like dolphins or eagles fan what do you mean? That leaked it? N yeah, like this girl's that just That made like, it up? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. it's a woman who, he, he fucked her and then bailed and was like, deuces, lady. 
and never fucked her again. And she was like, I'm going to fuck your life up. So you never forget me. It's the internet version of keying his car really just to make him look shitty. So she could be like, see, I'm a victim. Do I get, a, do I get to be on a uh, call her daddy now or something like that? You know, anyhow, we'll find out if it's fake down the road. I guess we'll, we'll update you next week but this one comes to us by way of ct riley josh potter show at gmail.com nba fans had a field day on social media when raptors wing grady dick and magic guard anthony black swapped jerseys after sunday's game in orlando the 20 year old rookies met up on the court now this is a thing that athletes of all sports do especially if they like respect each other or maybe there's two high profile athletes they switch jerseys and then they take a little picture and they take it home. Maybe they sign it. They take it home. They frame it and they put it on their fucking wall. Well, in this case, boy, oh boy, did they screw up the 20 year olds uh, met up on the court after an 11, uh, 111 to 96 magic win and held each other's jerseys for photos. But fans quickly noticed their f- last names combined for an inappropriate phrase. Why is this an inappropriate phrase? The phrase is black dick. Of course, if you're just, listening at home and didn't put two and two together <laughs> black dick is the phrase <laughs> that showed up on the screen everyone was clutching their pearls oh my lord black dick how dare they anything dick would have been bad right yeah i mean i not to shit on his name but like grady dick almost sounds like wilder than black dick like oh he got that great this guy's dick. regular name is leaky dick isn't it no <laughs> no but there there is a guy <laughs> what was his first name anthony black and grady dick is, grady dick is also bad that's what i'm saying grady dick almost sounds worse than black dick it's like if someone's got that grady dick what's that mean oh this was but from a different is, list now this was an nba circle jerk and it was a list of people that they said that grady should swap with and there is a person named leaky but there is leaky a leaky black. black oh but it's still black it's, but it's still black but there's also um andrew funk so you could have funk, funk dick, dick harden <laughs> dick Love Dick. Love Dick. Ob Top and Dick. Honorable mentions were Dayron Sharp and Trey Young. <laughs> Sharp Dick, Young. Young Dick. You got young that young dick. dick. No, exactly. I love this it. poor guy. I also like even if you put him into the front of the line, it's like then you got Dick Funk, Dick Harden, <laughs> Dick Love. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> this poor guy can't swap jerseys. It's just impossible. Poor guy. I think he's he's blessed with the best opportunity. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think he should get every he should collect the dick nicknames like Pokemon. Do you think that's why these guys are like, listen, bro, you suck and I, and no one should ever want your jersey, but it's funny. So I'm going to get all the I <laughs> want all the dick. jerseys. You should be number 69. Also, <laughs> give me that dick, it. Grady. Oh, my God. So, yeah, I mean, leave the guy alone at the end of the day. Before we get into the news, I want to uh, let you know that the Josh Potter show is brought to us today by rocket money are you spending too much every month and you might want to take a look at those subscriptions then because that's where i've lost a bunch of money over the past uh months i'll tell you what i I looked through that thing once rocket money showed it to me i can't tell you how many things on there i go what the heck is that Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills. Whether you accidentally signed up for something twice, I've accidentally signed up for something once. I'll tell you that. And I go, I don't even know what the heck this is. Or it's a subscription you totally forgot you had. Rocket Money is going to find it, and they're going to cancel it. So that money can go back into your wallet. Like I said, on this list, they give you a list, right? And it's just as easy as clicking through it, hitting cancel. And there were more things than I would have ever anticipated on my list that I had to get rid of. They'll even try to get you a refund for that last couple of months of your canceled subscriptions and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. Talk about going above and beyond, right? Rocket Money has over 5 million users and they've helped save its members an average of $720 per year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash pop. Potter. That's rocketmoney.com slash Potter. Rocketmoney.com slash Potter. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. The news has a lot of stuff, folks. A lot of wild stuff. A lot of wild stuff. You're all sending them in at Josh Potter Show at gmail.com. 
This one was sent from Johnny K. The email says, hey, Roach family, longtime listener, first time caller here. Auga. The uh, inner city blacks. <laughs> You keep saying this, you with. idiot woman! Idiot woman! Idiot! <laughs> oh, she ready? <laughs> Long time, first time. I just came across this article that I thought would fit in well with the weekly news. I'm a huge fan, and make sure to tune in every Wednesday morning. Thanks, Johnny K. <coughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was just so abrupt. <laughs> I've been holding that one in. So, <laughs> he's a professional. It didn't happen during the ad. I don't have a cough button. A man in Oregon arrested for allegedly grabbing women's feet and putting them on his face. I think I was coughing about that more so because that's disgusting. Thank God this you can get arrested for that because that's just heinous. Uh, could you imagine a foot just being like, oh, yeah. I guess some of you can, you fucking disgusting feet freaks. I don't kink shame. I've got some. But the feet thing, I'll never get. I don't know if it's, they say it's like a wire gets crossed. I always thought it was a thing as you grow older, you become a feet guy because you're, it's just over for you, you know. It's the male version of shutting it down. You're like, anything gets me off nowadays. <laughs> fucking foot and everything. But then I've seen younger people have it. And again, I'm not trying to... In reality, I don't actually hate your guts for liking feet if you do. But boy, oh boy, put a lid on it. This guy's rubbing him all over his face. On March 15th, Washington County Sheriff's Office deputies responded to a call from a woman who had a suspicious encounter with a man. I'd say he told me to walk on his face. Suspicious encounter is such a silly way of framing this. <laughs> Investigators said the woman reported that she responded to a Craigslist ad looking for a housekeeper and ended up going to the man's house in Aloha. Listen, if you are a housekeeper, Craigslist, not the place that you go to clean the house. They'll always want you to do something else. <laughs> and if I'm buying a, a house cleaner on Craigslist, I'm going to expect something else. <laughs> The Washington County Sheriff's Office identified the man as 55-year-old Jimmy Jen Liu. After the woman arrived in Liu's home, he allegedly grabbed her bare feet and rubbed them on his face. I would imagine some other things have to occur before that. You can't just be like, welcome into my home. Here's the foyer. <laughs> like, how does that? Give me those feet. She is Asian. Was she barefoot upon arrival? <laughs> The woman left the home and called police. Uh, okay. So she just got there, feet to face, right away. And then she left and was like, God, that was suspicious. You know what's it's a that little so suspicious. suspicious? I didn't even clean his house. I didn't even clean anything. I just walked on his face and left. This is nuts. Deputies said during the investigation, they discovered another woman reported similar behavior last month. The woman also responded to an ad that was looking for a housekeeper. Oh, my Lord. And the first time the police heard it, they go, okay, that's not that's not that suspicious. And then the second time they go, okay, now it is. <laughs> Lou was arrested at his home. Oh, no, she wasn't Asian. He was Asian. My bad. I'm sorry. Lou was arrested at his home and booked in the Washington County Jail on suspicion of harassment and third degree sexual abuse. He was arraigned on Monday and charges of third degree attempted sexual abuse and attempted harassment were added. Deputies said investigators found he had an expansive social media presence where he shared content seeking a housekeeper since as early as 2017. This man's house is never clean, folks. He needs a housekeeper. He's like, boy, oh, boy, I'm just always looking for a new housekeeper. <laughs> Can never find the right one. He also shared math tutoring services to children. <laughs> of course he did. Deputies believe that there could be more victims. Anyone who has any information on Lou is asked to call the non-emergency number at 503-629-0111. Crime Stoppers here on the Josh Potter Show did some Asian man ask you to walk on his face? <laughs> Call us at 503 629 I mean, really, he just needs to post two ads. He can get both of what he wants. Oh, my he Lord. He could probably get a whole parade to walk across his face if he would just advertise it, right? Yeah, right? I mean, just go outside and just find a lady to walk on your face. How hard is it? 
I mean, you have to get suspicious about it. It's not hard to get some feet on your face, I would imagine. How close have you let someone to like to your feet to where they could just grab them and start rubbing them on their face? What is Surprisingly that? and suspiciously. They don't even say what the conversation was. They just say she showed up to clean the house. So she's got like a mop and a bucket. And she's like, <laughs> uh, can you just show me where like your bathroom is? And he's like, I'm going to need you to take your shoes off. Oh, of course. To come inside. Yeah, for sure. Now, before we do anything, put your feet right on my fucking face. I mean, where does it go? They have to like sit down, I'd imagine. Also, is he just down on the ground? He's like, you see the floor here? Real dirty. Can you point at that with your foot? <laughs> oh, gotcha. Gotcha. I mean, I also don't want to invalidate this woman, but if I'm showing up to clean a house and then this man just wants my feet, I'll, I'll fucking tap dance on your cheeks. Yeah, you, you would have taken the money. Tell me what, I mean, yeah. She would have taken the money and ran with her bare feet out the door. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, well, that's the thing. I mean, this guy's clearly doing this a lot. Only two complain. He's been doing this since 2017. It's pretty wild. Well, folks, uh, maybe you're out there and you're like, you know, damn it. I wish I had a job like that where I could just step on an Asian man's face and make a lot of money. Jobs are plenty right now. Fast food, they need more employees in fast food restaurants. <laughs> They really do. I mean, they're running low. So if you're if you're looking, maybe you're out there and you're trying to do it. Here is a little training video. Not quite like the one we had from Old Country Buffet, but this is I forget what this is from. But this is a little tip if, uh, you know, maybe you're trying to get more hours for your job. Don't fumble the bag. Hey, Donna. Hey, Gary. Hey, can I talk to you about uh, getting some more hours? Yeah, sure. Why don't you good. grab this trash? We'll talk on the way to the dumpster. Okay. Yeah, talk on the way to the dumpster. Thank you so much for the hours, too, Donna. I really appreciate it. Gary, this if you need those hours, I'm going to need you to do something for me. Okay, what Why do don't you want? come over after work? We can discuss this. Okay, why are you touching me? No, I can't. Pause. I have a wife at home and a no. This is so hot. <laughs> If I was in the room they were showing this, it's like, is this porn? <laughs> is this Brazzers? This looks like Brazzers. Is this on Pornhub? Are we watching Pornhub? So she's like, if you're gonna if you want those extra hours, you're gonna have to come over. I would have gone over to not have extra hours if she just was like, Let's go to the dumpster. You can't do this to me. I would fall for this trap every time. If this lady was like, Why don't we take the trash out and let me talk to you about something? And then she was like, you're not going to get any extra hours. In fact, I actually have to cut your pay. But why don't you come over after and discuss it? And she starts touching me like that. I'd be like, I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, why are you touching me? And he's like, I have a wife or whatever. I get that part, I guess. <laughs> whatever. Go ahead. Oh, Gary, your wife doesn't need to know. You can come over. We'll have a few drinks. Who knows what else might happen? Oh, okay, God, no, you got me, lady. Boss. You're no. not going to get any hours then. Fumbled the bag, bro. <laughs> he fumbled the bag because he didn't want to get any of that sweet Waffle House puss. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking idiot. God, I would have been at her house right then and there. Are you kidding me? I like how they make the sexual harass. Like, it would ever go like that, for the record. <laughs> they couldn't reverse the roles. Otherwise, we'd be really watching something traumatic. <laughs> there would be employees in the oh, training room no. being like having PTSD and like there was no trigger warning on this. <laughs> that would be really funny if the director just goes, we're going to have this black man assault sexually this woman here just to show what not to do. <laughs> Wild video. <laughs> but no, they did it this way and now it's just hot. <laughs> they just went and made it fucking hot and real perplexing. Again, if I was in that man's position, we wouldn't even have to be talking about ours, frankly. <laughs> Luke Rutt sent this in. Uh, this is uh, about, uh, well, you know, we have a hard time with uh, school shootings these days. Maybe this was something to, like, remedy that. I don't know. Some parents <laughs> may pack a toy or little notes in their child's lunchbox to wish them well. During their day at school, one Palm Beach County mom allegedly left a little wholesome surprise. Is that what it says? A little less wholesome surprise. Sorry, I was going <laughs> to say, what the hell? <laughs> On March 14th, police arrested Shanae Davis after a Glock 43 handgun was discovered in her child's lunchbox at Jackson's daycare in Riviera Beach. I just think that's a good mother. <laughs> she goes, listen, I don't know what happens at the schools. You know, if you have an incident and they're happening more and more, you should be able to defend yourself. What's better than a bad guy with a gun? A good boy with a gun. 
right? We need a good boy with a gun to stop a bad guy with a gun. <laughs> According to the police report, a teacher screamed gun upon opening the lunchbox <laughs> that morning, prompting a coworker to run over. After questioning whether it was a toy, staff took a closer look and realized the gun was indeed real, at which point they called police. Davis told officers she routinely leaves her gun inside her car's glove compartment, but after a string of break-ins in her West Palm Beach apartment complex, she had been taking her pistol out of her car. She said that on the morning of March 14th, she placed the weapon in her child's lunchbox because she does not carry a purse and did not want it out in the open. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> What a place to put it. Why don't you just put it in your child's pants? I mean, Jesus. <laughs> According to Riviera Beach Police, Davis admitted she forgot to remove the gun from the lunchbox and later received phone calls from the daycare telling her to come to school immediately. Well, she forgot all about the gun. Did she not put, like, a sandwich in there or something? I mean, did she not open it to put the lunch in? How old is this kid's lunch that he's eating? If it's, like, that delayed or what have you <laughs> although the police say the daycare center owner did not want to press charges the 39 year old was arrested on counts of child neglect and allowing a minor to obtain a firearm and take it to school again i think it's just self-defense that's what i would have claimed they're not doing anything they're not arming the teachers let's arm our children what does this say uh, just, just looking just at the report saying, yeah i was trying to see if you could figure out like how old they were or not mm, daycare i just be pissed i don't have a sandwich in my lunchbox <laughs> Mm, yum. A gun. It just, <laughs> Jesus, what, it's a weird message to send. <laughs> Eat this. Eat lead, child. <laughs> Next up, this one rings close to home because I actually took advantage of squatters' rights one time. I'll tell you in a second. This is from T-Bone. Josh Potter Show at gmail.com is where you can send things in. And this is about our lovely state of California. You guys out there, you you know, you live in other parts of the country like what a shithole California is. Commie state. Well, I think this sounds pretty neat, if you ask me. A Beverly Grove place, quaint enclave adjacent to Beverly Hills, has long been coveted uh, as an address for the rich and famous. With basketball icon LeBron James recently erecting a lavish abode and power couple Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck dropping a cool $61 million on a compound last year. It seemed the epitome of exclusivity. However, shockwaves rippled through the neighborhood when reports surfaced of squatters taking up residence just down the block from LeBron James' forthcoming mansion. And then they get their docs, LeBron James, giving out his address here. I'm not going to do that. Boy, oh boy. Contrary to the image of struggling locals unable to afford Los Angeles' uh, exorbitant rents, you're looking at these weren't downtrodden individuals seeking shelter. Rather, they were opportunistic grifters exploiting a neglected mansion to masquerade as affluent socialites and host extravagant soirees. Morgan Gargiulo, an aspiring actor, spearheaded the operation fabricating a fake lease and established his claim over the mansion without facing legal repercussions, according to the outlet. The 5,900-square-foot property, which had been on sale since last August for $4.6 million, was seemingly fair game. Uh, Gargiulo infiltrated what's often dubbed the most exclusive zip code in America, that being 90210. And uh, it all highlights a troubling trend of squatting incidents in even the most affluent neighborhoods. So you see what happens, folks, when you're a squatter. All you got to do is just live someplace for like, I don't know, a month and like establish a residency. And then they can't kick you out. It's bananas. I had a month-to-month -month lease when I first moved here. And this is how I learned about these things. I had a month-to-month -month lease. And I first moved here, and I couldn't find a job for the life of me. It took me like four months to find a job. At the end of it, I missed a month of rent. And my landlord didn't know about it. Like, I was paying separate checks from my roommates. And all the checks just go in this box. And I was like, yeah, I put mine in there. And then they had to go back and see... So, like, by the time that they realized I hadn't paid, they legally couldn't prosecute me for it. Isn't that crazy? I didn't even know that till I did it. I just thought I was going <laughs> to get fined or something or pay them late or just, you know. How long was it after? Axe out some of that credit score like you always do. What's that? How long was it after, like, they realized it was like a month? It was like years. six months. Oh, and sure. then it was like, and they said, hey, we, we, we uh, blah, 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 we noticed. And I said, oh, check again. And then it was another six months before they like started getting up in arms about it. <laughs> and by then it was a year. And then I like 
I was like, uh, and I like called my friend who's a lawyer. He goes, you technically don't have to pay that. <laughs> 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 like they can't come get it from you. It's like they can make your life hell, but they can't come get that rent from you. And I was like, well, I'm not paying it. It's a corporation. It's not a guy. You know what I mean? It's just some Armenian corporation. So who cares, right? It was 900 bucks. I'll get it back if you want me to now. All right. If you're out there, you know, that's a scumbag move. I was poor. Leave me alone. Anyhow, these people did it a, a little better than me. Look at where they were I was living. Say, were you living somewhere like this? Nope. <laughs> like- but what these people do is they just move in, pretend they live there, even though like the guy who owns it's like got it for sale. And then they're like, "Well, you can't kick me out. I'm a squatter. I've been squatting here for a long." And there, it's just like, "Fuck!" Isn't that fucking nuts? It makes no. It really doesn't. Like, I hear you explaining it, and I've read about it, but it, it makes no sense to me. That's like my biggest nightmare if someone just like came into my house Imagine and like, took that. up regi- like residency and was like, <laughs> it's mine some, now. If somebody lived in the floorboards of here, we wouldn't be able to kick them out. Well, that might be happening based on what I've seen outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's very true. Oh, uh, man. But we have another story of a squatter, don't we? Or did I not put that one in there? Because it was so bad. Uh, I might not have put that one in. There was a story, another story I saw of a squatter. <laughs> I'm curious well so the story was that was the porch fire no 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 there were two people squatting in an apartment and the woman who like owned it hadn't rented it out for months and she decided to go check on the apartment when she got there the two squatters beat the shit out of her and then put her in a duffel bag <laughs> I kept that one out. And that one didn't make the prep. I'm so no, surprised. I kept that one out because it was just kind of, that was the end of it. <laughs> Not a lot of jokes there. It's just awful. It was kind of just one and done, you know, it was like two people. It was one of those New York Post articles where they're just basically stoking the race wars that are forthcoming. They were like, look what happened here, you know. So I was like, I'm not going to. But I talked about it anyway. Look at that. <laughs> I'm L- curious if they kept the apartment. <laughs> I don't think they did. Uh <laughs> They found her body in a duffel bag, the poor lady. Anyhow, Lucas Casillas sent in an email. It says, hey, Josh, seen you in Albuquerque with Tom and enjoyed your set uh, so much. Huge fan. Here's a good story with a crazy mugshot picture. Keep them high and tight, Roach. Lucas Casillas. So this is just a story about it with a crazy mugshot. A woman was arrested after she started a fire on a stranger's porch. Ooh, I love this. <laughs> Oh, boy. Hold on. We'll get to the mugshot in a second. The homeowner told police that her home security cameras captured a woman on the porch who lit something on fire. The homeowner also said smoke was visible in the footage. Officers found the woman identified as Michelle Young, 46. She admitted to starting the fire when officers asked what she was doing. Young told police that she was walking around the area, picked up miscellaneous items, including a car's taillight, tinfoil, bark and a yellow lawn flag none of which sounds flammable to me really or like they, they would light on fire pretty quickly if she's making is this macgyver is this woman female macgyver she's just gonna create a little fire making thing out of a taillight tinfoil bark and a yellow lawn flag i don't know once they get that tinfoil they're pretty unstoppable <laughs> and the taillight she's like shit with tinfoil. <laughs> <laughs> she said that she went to the home believing her friend lived there she knocked three times but did not get a response she said she sat on a porch chair, smoked a cigarette. I mean, she had cigarettes the whole time and a thing to light a cigarette. She could have just used that to light the fire. She just got a <laughs> bunch of garbage for no reason. When Young did not get an answer after she knocked again, she lit the item she had with her on fire. Totally rational response. <laughs> My friend said she'd be here at 2 o'clock. It is now 2.15 and I'm waiting on the porch. You know what happens. I'm going to light this random garbage on fire. She also... Said that she saw a sign that said, which is welcome. Oh, that's why she was there. And because she is a witch, she started the fire, according to police, because she's a witch. She said she also put clothing in the fire. Young told police that she did not. She was not going to hurt anyone or let the fire get out of control. She's doing some witch shit. Hey, witch is welcome. That's why I'm doing this. Your doorbell wasn't working. I thought I had to call her. She was up there flying around <laughs> on her broom. I had to get a smoke signal up there. Young charges of uh, Young has received charges of reckless use of a fire, explosive, destructive devices, possession of drug paraphernalia. She had drunk, of course she did. <laughs> and here she is, folks, Michelle Young. Take a look at this picture. Oh my lord! 
I believe her. I don't think she would have let it got too out of hand. She certainly looks like a witch. <laughs> Look at that hair. This is like... Uh, to be that happy. This is actually my like stereotypical scariest person. You know what I mean? Like, If you were to go into everyone's deepest, darkest heart, you would find a stereotype of a scary person. My grandma's would be a black man or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a big black man. She would be terrified, my grandmother. Mine is this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if you it's were to, wild because I saw this just down the block. Yeah, right. I know. Up. I'll see a couple of these ones out in the street. I go, Jesus, I would take uh, the uh, inner city black <laughs> any day of the week over this lady. <laughs> Golly, this lady's fucking crazy. <laughs> I mean, look at her. I, you know what's so funny? Like, I kind of believe that she's a witch. You know what's why? I mean, I definitely believe she thinks she is. I'll say that. <laughs> Do you know what's wild, though? Is like, she's obviously middle-aged, older maybe than that. It says what? 40, yeah, 46. 46. In her 20s, I would have been like, Michelle's kind of like hot in a scary way. Like, have you ever <laughs> dated a girl like that where you're like, not even dated, but just like hooked up with a girl where you're like, she's hot, but she's like kind of frightening to me like in a way that like she seems unhinged and weird like she would actually I would start to hook up with her and my penis would be like Jiminy Cricket and it would not get hard because it would be frightened of her that she might burn your house down yeah 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 yeah. there was a girl that I had that Jiminy Cricket dick with where she was like kind of (laughs) she was hot but my dick was like "Uh uh-uh bro we are not doing this and her house was like it was a studio apartment and she was like a hoarder there was like garbage like like a lot of stuff like piled up and she slept on a mattress and i remember she was like let me light a candle and she lit a candle with like paper and she almost burned the entire building down it was crazy and i was like my penis is not going to get hard in this situation (laughs) She was a cool stripper, though. We used to be, <laughs> during COVID, we did coke at like 2 p.m. every day. It was the best. Uh, anyhow. Poor Jiminy Cricket dick. My Jiminy Cricket dick was like, nah, dog. We are not <laughs> fucking this girl. Anyhow, T-Bone sent in a follow-up that's a fun little story. Speaking of, uh, f- I don't know, this woman always kind of, I was like, I think she's kind of hot for like being a little local towny mousy cop girl. There's just something about her like... Y'all remember her, folks. Remember the Tennessee cop sex scandal? Mm -hmm. This woman was taking the whole department's dick at one time, and she was just blowing people, sucking and fucking, and her husband was initially down with it. Then he was like, you know what? I'm going to be a fucking wet blanket. Remember this story? Well, yeah, I think part of her downfall, too, was that she didn't take the whole department. She took, like... Right, there was one cuck out there. She took, like, five out, out of six, and that sixth one was like, this bitch. I want some pussy, too. And then he had to yeah. blow up all their spots. The former Tennessee cop who got axed for her trysts with six other officers on the job settled her federal civil lawsuit against her former employer for a whopping half a million dollars. So now, not only is she a babe who sucks and fucks everyone in the in the room... She's a bit of a rich bitch now, too. (laughs) Sounds like a real... This lady's a winner. I want to go on a date with her. I wonder what's going on with her dating life. Is she married now? Megan Hall, who claimed uh, she was sexually groomed, which is like, all right, don't throw that card out there after you've been... (laughs) Own it. You're my favorite person, and now you're going to be like, I was groomed, and now I'm going to be like, oh, God, all right. Well, whatever gets you the, the bag, I guess. Um... She was sexually groomed by a, co- a, a is this a, is that word cadre of know. male colleagues? Google what that You're word is. Yes. Person, but cadre. Yeah. What does that mean? I, I've a heard lot. that word a lot. It just means a group. Yeah. Oh, a small group of people I like that specifically word specifically trained for a particular mm. purpose or profession. Ooh, I like that. I like that word. On Wednesday, the Laverne board voted three to one in a special meeting to settle the suit. The Laverne Board of Mayor and Alderman blah, 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 voted tonight to authorize the mayor to sign a settlement agreement between the city of Laverne and former police officer Megan Hall. Uh, the agreement was negotiated between the attorneys representing city and the hall. The city's, the city's insurance provider will pay the sum of $500,000 to Hall as a gross settlement, which includes court costs, attorneys, fees and expenses. The city denies any admission of liability and no taxpayer funds will be spent to settle this lawsuit. Hell of a fucking insurance claim. Imagine wasting the insurance of a city on that. Be like, yeah, we could have did it for a couple other things, but let's just pay off this chick who got all the dicks in her face. (laughs) 
I don't know why she's like hotter to me, knowing all of this. Wood. I mean, I, I love that this is what they include. Yeah, sweet. For this article, yeah. they're like, look at her ride this mechanical If you want to see some footage of Megan Hall, here she <laughs> is on the mechanical bull. She really gets at it. I mean, they go, and if you notice, this is above the average time that most people ride a mechanical bull, showing that she's really, in fact, well-versed at riding. The bull was actually on the force. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Once she found out the bull wasn't a detective or a lieutenant or anything like that, she jumped right off. Is that her too there, though? Yes. It is right. Okay. Yeah, that's when she was like on TV. She's like, I was groomed or whatever. It's like, come on, just be like, I was fun. I was the best time these Tennessee motherfuckers ever saw. That's all of them. It just looked like the same picture <laughs> from where I'm sitting because it was all zoomed out. I thought they were just the same guy with a goatee. I can't really see. She has a type. That's for sure. The shocking investigation report included findings that then police chief Burrell Chip Davis, who was fired over the scandal, not only knew about Hall's hookups, but joked about the situation with others in the city. Well, that's why it got out. Who dat? Davis allegedly said when shown a vulgar photo of by Hall or of Hall by another cop, Ty McGowan. Hall, Lewis Powell. McGowan replied, he on it again, the, ch the chief quipped. The ex-top cop also joked about a 13-minute video that allegedly show Hall masturbating, which was shared among some of the male cops inside the department. We'll share it with the rest of us. What are we going to watch her on the bull, for Christ's sake? In her lawsuit, Hall claimed that her encounters began with an affair with Powell and led to others in the department targeting her until she gave in to their sexual advances. Well, that makes it sound not as fun. When you make it out to be like that. I know what most people are saying. She said during her first public comments about the scandal in March of 23. You know, you could have said no. I get it. But my response to them is I did say no. And they wouldn't take no for an answer. Eventually, I gave in from pressure. Why couldn't she be? Why couldn't they just be like, I didn't want to say no. I wanted to fuck all these dudes in the thing. I mean, that would have been fun too, lady. Come on. She wouldn't have gotten the $500,000 if she admitted how much. She was into it. Megan wasn't looked at like a rookie cop to be trained and promoted. Clark said she was looked like a piece of meat to be sexualized and exploited. Wasn't she like at parties with her husband and being like, I'm going to go blow Jeff in the other room. And wasn't she doing all that shit? Yeah, I think there was like a story of them being in a hot tub and her maybe <clears throat> blowing them in said hot tub. Yeah, this makes it sound really like rapey compared to the one that we initially heard where she was just at parties being a fun time but anywho i'm glad she got the bag hit me up <laughs> if you're back out there come on out to la you know come on the podcast maybe we go to dinner i don't know i'm not gonna sexually pressure you i'm too much of a fucking bitch boy to do any of that and i'll be like well the cops are nice anyhow <laughs> <laughs> drp sent this bad boy in and uh this involves semen terrorism to a, great, to a degree, but it may be in a different angle. And, of course, DRP, a Rochi Award-winning reporter, by the way, Josh Potter Show at gmail.com is where you can send things in, folks. Now they're stealing the semen out of the garbage, said, says D in an email. That's why Drake always put hot sauce in there. Oh, that is smart of Drake, to kill the jizz before some, you know, jizz bandit can come along and scoop it up. A company marketing an at-home insemination kit on the social media platform X is encouraging women to fish used condoms out of the trash without their partner's knowledge and then use the collected semen to get pregnant so as to make him a dad without his permission. Wow. This is diabolical, folks. Diabolical. <laughs> the company Make <coughs> what? Make a Mom... <laughs> no fucking way <laughs> make a mom it's like make a wish <laughs> it touts it's 250 dollar semen stealing product as a way to circumvent laws in the u.s that make it illegal to poke holes in condoms without the knowledge of both participants that's a crime to poke holes in the condoms yeah, yeah. That's, that's fucking very cool. much a crime from both sides well what's the, what's the what's the charges uh, I think R word. Assault. I, I think R word. Yeah. R word. Not. Wow. Yeah. Even if a woman does it. Yeah. Interesting. Because well, it's not consensual if you don't know they're poking the holes. Wow, we gazowie. Yes, well. It is. <laughs> 
One of its ads on X notes that while poking holes in condoms without the knowledge of both sexual partners is illegal in most states, stealing the condom without his knowledge, not illegal in any state. Oh, a loophole, if you will. A poked loophole in the condom. What ad shows someone poking a hole in a condom with a syringe as a cover version of the song Sweet But Psycho plays in the background? Do we have that? I mean, mute it so we don't get taken down, but boy, oh boy, they have ads. In the next segment... An unidentified individual grabs a used condom out of the trash. What a sweet way to get a baby. <laughs> I want a baby so bad. They're just like, Ugh. crazy. I, I've let women handle the condoms on occasion. The last couple times I've worn them, they've thrown them out. But I don't jizz in them, you see. I don't give them even an ounce. Oh, my God. I'm oh, on the shit, clock. He's on the clock. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get, it, we'll get it up and running here in a second. Oh, boy, we've got to wrap up the story. It's too good to, to just stop abruptly. But, yes, I've I've definitely let the women handle the condoms. They could have taken my jizz on occasion. It just says not legal advice, dot, 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 hashtag home insemination. <laughs> you know what kind of dad you want? What's that? The one who doesn't know he's going to become a dad. You want to be? Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly who you want to be procreating with, the person who's like, I don't want that. I'm trying to not make that happen. That's so true. Like, yeah. No, the dad that you should really want to get jizz from is that hobo guy that has the, the condom in the trash after you just uh, let him jizz up inside of you there. I don't know. To press the sperm into the vagina, the ad instructor instructs users to do. Then uh, the clip then cuts to an animated illustration showing sperm swimming toward the egg. The ad then cuts to a clip of a pregnant woman caressing her baby bump. It then shows several news headlines reporting on... Inc- this is fucking gross, dude. This is disgusting to me. Only do this to NBA players if you're going to do this. <laughs> I, I mean, this is not to do it to... You don't want to do this to just like every Tom, Dick, and Harry, right? Th- I mean, like I can see a couple... Like if you're in a loving relationship and you're just using this consensually with a partner, but like to be like, hey, wait around... Go into the dumpster, pull it out. Hope it's not too crusty yet, so you can suck it up. Wait, wait, wait! In the ad, they have them going to the dumpster. I just thought it would be like the cash in or the trash in the kitchen bathroom or something, or the maybe or the kitchen or the bathroom. A little too much, but either way, like why are we? Why pouring out? I don't know. Oh my god! I already missed my first pick. Oh come on! Who did I get? The got, show, hey, I fuck got, you all up. I got Mookie Betts. That's Ooh. not bad. That's not bad. Ooh. That's fucking dumb, though, that it started already. <laughs> Illegal in most states. I'm mad about that. Anyhow, folks, just if you're going to poke holes in the condoms, or I mean not poke holes in condoms, do whatever. What is, so what does it do exactly? Does it say? Well, it we should like get to we that. We have a couple different um, devices here is what's interesting. I don't really know what I'm looking at. Is this not poking holes? They just suck the jizz out? Well... It, I don't know. I don't know why. You got to have this holes. whole kit on you so that you can be like, what do we have here? You know, every little situation is different. It's like if the jizz is in the reservoir tip, you have this device. If it's smeared about the sides of the condom, you have this device. Vision, goal, action, success. <laughs> I don't think that's how. That's a Their lo- two-step plan for needing a sperm donor. That is a lofty. Have your device ready and available for peak ovulation. Find a donor and coordinate with them. Or just hang around his uh, his trash cans. Or just fuck a guy and grab it. What happened to just tricking a guy to come inside you already? You know what I mean? <laughs> we used to be a country. <laughs> <laughs> and wear condoms. Inject. Impregnate. I'm mad that I just drafted oh, a guy. Sorry. Here's a here's a couple Ooh, of pictures. After now that's what I want. Yeah. Three proven intra cervical insemination solutions. Wow. So here's how you do it, folks. Once you gather the jizz, you put it up inside you like that, like a turkey baster. We've had many stories like this. Remember the woman in the prison? All right, folks, let's wrap up the show, shall we? Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Al Madrigal will not be on next week, but he hopefully will be on the episode after that. And I'll get into what we discussed on the phone. I'm excited for that. We've got a couple of other guests lined up here in the coming weeks that I'm excited about. We're going to get Catherine Blanford on in here in a couple of weeks, I hope, and uh, a few others. Dan St. Germain. I'm looking forward 
to the guests that we're going to have. I'm also looking forward to being on the road. The most important pressing one being Huntsville, Alabama, April 26th, 27th. Please to be buying tickets for that. TheJoshPotter.com is where you can buy tickets and where you can find everything uh, the Roach has for you. Now, if you're watching this as it comes out, join up with the Your Mom's House memberships. It helps the Roach out, and you get to watch Behind the Jeans live every Wednesday at one or at uh, what time is it? 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, and then it comes out Thursday for the rest of the folks. But if you want to get live, join up the membership. I love you very much. We'll see you next time right here on the Josh Potter Show. Thank you to Alex. Thank you to Kirsten. Have a good one. All right. Roach, we shotgun the beers, ain't got time for a toast. It's the only place to get my sports like for real. Sonny taught us nobody's more sus than Russell Wilson. Here's the deal, son, won't find us in Walmart. Josh Potter, keep it frank, kind of like a ballpark. It wasn't nothing talking all that jism. Turns out there's a lot of semen terrorism. terrorism. Now it's time we hit him, bring Votto to the plate. Roachy, you warned from Chase O'Donnell the Great. Let me stop for a second, because it's Ask Marty time, because it's idiocy. You know I can't abide. Not a fan of these guys, gonna damage the rise. Worse than the host known as the Roach. Leave an idiot woman standing on the side. They're looking like she just tripped into a moat. I'ma kill this Henny beat like uh-uh murder. Been in more studios than most have ever heard of. Please to be listening, hit that like and subscribe. So many Bills hats got the mafia vibe. A lot to describe like a roach reporter. Teacher on OF, don't report her. Trying to live life with my mannequin wife and my mannequin kids if that's my mannequin right. Been a fan of this guy since the roach motel. Couple hundred weeks in, still funny as hell. From the tick cups to back sis and blind eyes, Potter has one of the best, best shows of all time. Now watch this drive. Pop a couple tall cans with the roach king and caught the vibe. Ready to pour more scurry out the floorboards hit like comment and subscribe